Let's now tell you that Senator Hamed Aliyu Wadada, the lawmaker representing Nasara West Zone, has urged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to approve at least 150,000 naira as the new minimum wage. Wadada made this known in an interview with newsmen in the Kefi local government area of Nasara State. The lawmaker noted that the current realities of the Nigerian economy informed his decision to propose the figure which will go a long way in alleviating the hardship faced by the workers. He also said he and other lawmakers were willing to make sacrifices in terms of reducing their remuneration and allowance just to ensure Nigerian workers earn decent monthly salaries. Joining me on the news right now to discuss this is public affairs analyst Theophilus Agatuba. Thank you for your time. Now, how realistic is the proposal by the senator? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Theophilus Agatuba. Theophilus Agatuba. All right, I, I got that. I actually said that. But uh, thank you for joining once again. Now, how realistic is the proposal of the senator? Uh, well, you know, there are various uh, proposals, and uh, everyone believes this figure is the best. He's proposing uh, 150,000. Others are proposing 90,000. The federal government is saying 62,000. Governors are saying they can't do more than. So there are various figures. Uh, it's, not, it's not about the figure. It's about the sustainability. The allowances of the senators will be a tiny drop uh, in the ocean of, of the money that will be needed to pay the current workforce. So. They appear, it's a good proposal, it's a populist proposal. It's going to make him a very, you know, popular and uh, admired figure among workers. However, is that sustainable, you know, on the long run? Yeah, because what, what the senators take as an allowance is not, it's, it's not something that cannot be uh, put out or be cancelled in the future. And so I do not uh, see that as a sustainable suggestion even though it's a fine suggestion, it's a beautiful proposition. And so we must look at what is more sustainable. Uh, what is more sustainable is to ensure that the workers indeed have a living wage, a wage that they, with which they can take themselves home back to work and be comfortable as human beings, but must be sustainable. And then must be based on also output. Because majority of the workers in this particular debate, we have not done this debate anchored on what is the figure currently, what will be the figure if the increment is approved, and then what is the promised output. Because output naturally should make us more revenue, more money to be able to pay any salary or any wage that we all agree on. If outputs are low, and the attitude of the worker in Nigeria does not change or improve, then there's no amount of wage that will be paid to that is sustainable. Mm. Now, you, said, you, talk, you talked about output, but uh, let's look at uh, the current economy or the economic situation right now in Nigeria when it comes to you know, planning, even at the micro level, right? It's pretty much difficult for individuals these days to run on a budget. The reason is as a result of the volatility of the economy itself. The price at which you meet something in the morning, you know, might have escalated before, you know, noon. So uh, my question to you is this. Many have questioned the approach of, you know, uh, what you would call, in your words, living wage. That maybe labor shouldn't just, you know, uh, attack or you know fight for the issue of minimum wage from the angle of what is in people's pockets but on the capacity the purchasing power the strength of the naira what's your take but that is true if you want to talk about any wage if they award you a million naira today as your minimum wage and that million naira cannot buy what twenty thousand can buy or if they give you a hundred thousand and a hundred thousand 
can buy what a hundred thousand should buy because that is what we should be talking about and that comes to productivity your currency cannot be stable if everyone is dependent on foreign goods and if we are all importing and not producing what will happen to any wage you assign or you give to workers will just be for a little a short time after that its value is eroded and the worker is back to demanding for more wage volatility must be curbed the currency must be seen to be stable and it's not just the action of government alone it's the action of every nigeria because this time we are discussing and media is talking sometimes media appear to be another opposition arm only fighting the government the government can do much but the citizens need to understand that we have this country we have a nation that once it prospers every one of us will be comfortable before we start doing about playing politics and fighting one another over who is on which divide and who is not because the economic situation today knows no political divide knows no religious divide no no ethnicity it affects every one of us equally so like you said volatility will erode any amount awarded to workers as a minimum wage so that we must focus on as a nation mm. now let's of course uh, go back to the proposal by the senator how much of an impact should this scale through do you think this will have on the standard of living of workers in Nigeria? Uh, well, naturally, if you have an increase in your pay, you now have capacity to buy more and buy the things that you have not been buying. Now, if we award wages and you have fewer goods in the market, what will you do? What they have, we buy off what we have, and then inflation will set it. People will also adjust their prices. So we must be careful. It's not just about the figure. It's about all the factors that goes into the consideration and determination of minimum wage in the country. But let me say this. The current minimum wage in Nigeria is a disgrace. It's inhuman. Let me tell you why. The reason why many Nigerian workers never realize that they were underpaid globally is because of the subsidies system that Nigerian government has practiced over the years. That has incubated and created huge poverty that people were living in without realizing it. People were buying petrol at unrealistic international prices. People were buying, going to hospitals that were subsidized. People were sending their children to universities at subsidized rates. People were doing uh, elect using electricity at subsidized rates. That will make you have an illusion that what you are being paid is adequate. That's why this reform that the president has started, very massive, very dangerous reform, it requires reaching out to the citizens because the citizens have been exposed and all they have now becomes nothing. And so it is now for government to reach out. Otherwise, I smell danger. I smell an explosion if government does not do anything drastic. Hmm. Now, on the part of the government, would you say the government in its, uh, I mean, aside uh, proposals like this, do you, would you also say the government is doing its own share, you know, in the aspect of tightening its belt, just as it uh, tells the citizens to endure? The government is not uh, doing enough. You know, it's very, it's a very thin line between cutting your cost and running the government. Uh, and there are a lot of debates, but we have a nation to run. We have a government to run. And uh, the country must be seen to be functional. The country must not be seen to be collapsing. And a lot of things represent our frontal image. So for me, government need to do more. They need to cut their costs. They need to cut extravagance. They need to really be very, very frugal. And so I don't think they're doing enough. I believe there's more they can do. All right. Uh, thank you for your time on the news, Theophilus. Thank you for the opportunity to be on the news with you.